The Knives Alaska Bush Camp, designed for rugged bush camp, field dressing, cooking, and other camp chores, is one of Knives of Alaska's most popular knives. Stick around for a full review. Hi, I'm the OCD Hunter, bringing you tips, tricks, DIY hacks, and other useful ways that my OCD can make your life a little bit more simpler. This knife is a large 10 and a half inches long, full tang, 14 one hundredth inch thick knife with a six inch drop point blade made from D2 steel. Knives of Alaska double draw heat temper and cryogenic freeze treatment give this knife a rock hard solidness of 59 to 61 on the Rockwell scale. Weighing 8.3 ounces, it has a Hunter non-glare matte finish and features a finger choil, which is nice, allowing you to choke up for more control of the blade for fine carving. Its handle is equipped with their sheer grip technology. However, there is some variations on this handle from some of the other knives. The most noticeable difference is the Bush Camp version has some mild stippling on the sides. My verdict is still not in if I like the stippling or not. Initially, I wasn't a fan, but since I've used it more and more, it has begun to grow on me. One handle I absolutely love is their Alpha Wolf. It is just an awesome handle because the material they use just feels great in the hand. Here you can see a comparison between the two. I'll do a full review of the Alpha Wolf, but it will have to wait until hunting season because I use this knife for game processing only. This blade does not touch anything else, not wood, not any other food, not even paper to see how sharp it is. The Alpha Wolf currently stays in my field dressing kit all year round, which I'm in the process of doing a video on as well. But back to the handles and how they compare. The Alpha Wolf handle is really kind of hard to explain. You almost just have to feel it. It is soft to touch like an OtterBox phone case skin, durable to the outdoor environment, but has a sticky grip that locks into the hand. And even if it gets wet or bloody, there is no loss to this grippiness. It just securely locks the knife in your hand, even in rubber gloves. Knives of Alaska really outdid themselves with the Alpha Wolf Sure Grip handle. I kind of wish that they had designed the Bush Camp handle the same way. For size comparison of the Bush Camp knife, here is my Moore Garberg. You can see that the Knives of Alaska Bush Camp is quite a bit larger and the blade is a little thicker. But before we go any further, I think now is a good time to explain my philosophy for gear reviews. I believe in testing products out for real world scenarios and what the product is intended to do. I believe in carrying the right tool for the right job and I test my tools according to their intended use or a little bit past to see how the product performs. There's plenty of videos out there that put products through torture tests to test their limits, but these are my knives, I purchased them, and I use them for very specific tasks, and that's why I test them the way I do, for their intended use, so you can get a realistic picture of what the product is. I would say the main purpose that Knives Alaska knives are designed for is for hunting tasks. These knives are killer meat processors and are extensively field tested out in the wild of Alaska in the harshest of conditions on some of the toughest game, even though they're manufactured in Texas. To learn more about their history, their choice of steel, the rugged testing they use, and just a great overview of Knives Alaska, look to my video about Knives Alaska history. There will be a link in the description. That being said, there is no real secret to this blade. It's a straightforward pseudo Bowie design that provides you with a practical knife that is large enough for overall bush camp tasks as well as delicate game processing. I'll start with the more tougher camp tasks and then move to the more delicate processes just so you can see how the knife's blade does. Now I'll tell you, it doesn't chip and it holds a good edge. Now it is made from D2 and I know that there's no shortage of opinions on this steel. The one thing I'll say is that Knives Alaska really has their heat treatment down and produces a very rugged knife. I'll also add that D2 may not be my steel of choice but Knives Alaska knows how to do it and they do it right. And I have no problem using any of their products made in D2. Remember, I already own two of them. But like I said, I did a Knives Alaska history video that covers their steel choice. So make sure you watch that. The sheath that comes with it is high quality vegetable tan, oil split grain cowhide. It's a traditional style sheath, very durable and fits the knife well. 
but for me I just don't like this style of sheath because it's just too hard to resheath when I'm out and the knife is on my belt. You can see what ends up happening because the knife is so sharp and the sheath opening is so hard to find that as I try to resheath it, the knife begins to cut through it. This is solely a preference thing. I just like something that is easier to resheath. I decided to try Kydex for the first time and ordered a custom from Yellowhawk Custom Kydex. It is easy to resheath without having to look at and the retention is great. I'll review the sheath in more detail in a later video. Now when I'm out hunting and camping, I carry a hatchet or small ax and at the very least my Baco Laplander to help me process wood. But in my opinion when I think of a bush camp knife, I think it should be able to handle some light to moderate wood processing as well as general camp tasks and game processing. So let's start with some wood. First, let's try some batoning. Now here again is a hot topic, but I'm not going to get into the debate if a knife should be used or not to baton. But I'll simply state that I do think a good camp knife should be able to assist in the process of breaking down reasonable sized pieces of wood down into smaller pieces for fire starting and other general purposes. So here you can see I have a log about four inches in diameter. This is probably the biggest diameter I would go. Now to use this for fire, you want to get the driest part, which would be in the center. This knife grind is designed to give the blade tip more strength and also is a good shape for splitting the grains of wood quite well. The blade is not too thick, which allows it to split through the grain smoothly. There's no powder coating on it either to cause friction against the wood, just a bead blast finished. As I'm processing the wood into smaller pieces, you can see that the knife has no trouble to prep this wood for a fire. The larger blade can be used to plane the wood working well with strokes away from the body, as well as almost treating it as a draw knife, drawing it towards yourself with two hands. As for feather sticking, there is not much control with the large blade when using the handle. But when I choke up and use the finger toil, it gives the ability to get pretty decent thin curls, producing some nice feather sticks. Another way to accomplish feather sticks with this knife, since the blade is nice and large, is to drive the tip into the wood and pull a piece of wood towards you along the sharp edge. With just using gentle pressure along the blade, you can process your wood into feather sticks very quickly. This process works both with large logs and small sticks. As for other tasks, when dealing with chest lever cuts, it is the same as making feather sticks. Because the knife blade is so big, there's a lack of control just using the handle. But as soon as I choke up and use the finger toil, the knife works great. Same with the hammer grip. You have better control using the toil. The knife works well with the draw cut to make fine cuts. and the big belly gives it great ability for rocking cuts, X cuts, and push cuts to make notches. As a light chopper, it has no difficulty processing the wood. Either to cut it down or to shape the end. The knife has a great point for drilling holes into the wood, and with the swoop of the blade, you can push on the blade towards the sharp side while drilling to easily widen and flatten the hole quickly. Another feature that impresses me is the sharp 90 degree spine on this bush camp knife. It is great for processing bark and fatwood. It actually does a better job 
than my Mora Garberg, as well as it throws better sparks with my ferro rod than my Mora Garberg. Starting a fire with fatwood is extremely easy with this knife. Finally, some cross grain cutting. This is one of the hardest ways to cut wood with a knife, but I wanted you to see that Knives of Alaska know what they are doing with their hardening process of this piece of D2 steel. Because after I cut through the seasoned hardwood, there are no chips, rolling of the steel, or any damage to the blade. And it is still razor sharp, creating nice feather sticks. Now that you've seen some heavy lifting with the knife, let's see where this product really shines and let's move into the kitchen. Now one thing I will say is I did not sharpen the blade after the wood processing, nor did I touch it up before we started to do the food processing. First I cleaned up the knife with a mild detergent soap and then I put a little food grade oil over it. I always use olive oil. You have to remember that D2 will rust if you don't take care of it. To see how well it retained its sharpness, I'll test it on this tomato. You can see how thin I get the pieces. I can even skin the tomato with the blade. Next I move on to a potato and try to do a draw cut to peel it. It works, but the blade is really just too big for this style of peeling. Also, one thing to note is that the swoop in the blade actually takes a little getting used to if you're used to using a flat kitchen knife. And since there is some stoutness to the blade thickness, you can actually feel some resistance as the blade slices into potato. But here's where the knife really shines. It's off season and I really wish I had some fresh game to prep to show you but I would just have to stick with what I have here. What amazes me is how well and how effortlessly this knife cuts through meat and fat, even after all the work with the cutting of the wood. Imagine how well it would do if I just put a brand new edge on it, or even just took any burrs off with my straw. I mean, here, I'm only really using the weight of the knife and two fingers, and it just smoothly sliced through the meat. I'll move on to a thin piece of salmon. I know that if I were working on fish, I would use a thin fillet knife, but I wanted to show you on this thin piece of salmon that if I choke up on the fat blade, I can actually skin the fish like a deer. That's right, here is what gets me excited about Knives of Alaska. D2 or not, ultimately, this is what these knives are designed for, and they do not disappoint. Plus, with their reasonable price point, you can buy a hunting knife at a reasonable price that will outlast you if you take care of it properly. The Knives of Alaska Bush Camp Knife is a great utilitarian knife suited for heavy tasks of camping, traversing woodland landscape, and especially game processing. There is no denying, whether you are a fan of D2 or not, that Knives of Alaska have proven their ability to produce a great knife that holds an excellent edge excels in meat processing, and has the ability to do some heavy wood processing without the chipping or rolling of the blade. I'm the OCD Hunter and I hope that my continual painstaking practice of changing, fixing, and improving on ideas will help you out in your endeavors. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell next to the subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Comments are always welcome.